He settled in all four quarters of the earth. He is in all, basically all the wicked is represented by this Gog. And uh, that's another for another study. But he's going to go to all them, and those are the ones that are going to be deceived once again, and the, all those that have been born during that thousand years will be tried. Some of them will choose Christ in that moment. Some of them will not. To gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. There's uh, 196 nations in the world. And that's how far the old devil has went to deceive the nations. He's everywhere. And uh, Gog was just one man born in the lineage of uh, Ham, I believe. But that the spirit of that has went throughout the whole world. And even though God destroys the biggest part of them in Ezekiel 38, we see that that's coming during the tribulation. He says, I'm going to leave a sixth part of you. So He leaves a sixth part of those so that they can come again and do this thing and try the nations once again. And uh, they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Much different battle than the battle of Armageddon, isn't it? This is just a, okay, be gone. The Word of God just says, be gone. Different than what we've seen before. But it's, a, this is different. This is the camp of the Lord. This is what we're, we're over, the, we're in New Jerusalem. And, uh, God's not going to allow anything to happen to His beloved. I got children at home. And I tell you, sometimes I'm a nervous wreck. Thinking that something's going to get them. Are you ever like that? Brandon, you ever struggle with that? I can't imagine what it's like for God to have to stand back and watch us get hurt. Can you imagine? You know how much you love your kids, Justin? You'd do anything for them. Amber, they mean the world. Imagine what it's like for God to just have to let us get hurt. This day, he's going to be having a ball. This is the day he gets to take vengeance out. Hey, hey, mamas, you mamas out there, somebody hurt your kid, can you think of a different, a better time for you to let out your anger? Somebody hurt your kid and you just can't wait to get at their throat. Right? I mean, now you may be more... Christian like in your actions, but your thoughts would be, they hurt my kid, I'm going all out. And all it's going to take is one word. All it's going to take is God just saying, it's enough, it's over, I don't have to, nobody else is going to be saved, you've all chosen to be who you are, now it's done, it's over. And it even says this, everybody that, or that's in Revelation 22, we'll get there in a couple of weeks, but it says, let him that is filthy be filthy still. Let him that is unrighteous be unrighteous still. It's a, they're all confirmed in what they've chosen in their life. Just like the fallen angels, when they fell, there was no chance of redemption for them. They were confirmed in their fall. Same thing is going to come to mankind. We've got to get them before that day. If you've got the mindset that, oh, God will just get whoever's going to be saved, I don't have to do nothing. You better make sure you're saved yourself. The Spirit of God in you 
The Bible says, how dwelleth the love of God in you? If someone has a spiritual need like that and you don't want to fill it. How's anybody ever going to even know that the love of God is in you? If you're only about yourself. They will not know. No one will be brought to the feet of Jesus because of you. All this stuff we see here, it really should, should unction us to, to try and start getting some things out of our life that shouldn't be there, that does not glorify God, and put some things in that does glorify Him. And I'm not going to stand up here and tell you I'm perfect in everything. I'm going to tell you, just like I always have, that I am just as bad as we all are. Amen. I'm the same. I have struggles. Now look, I have learned how to deal with them from being in the Scripture, but I have to be in the Scripture every day. I have to know it. Like, I don't even know how to put a... I can't hardly settle one day and not study the Scriptures in some way. I, 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 and it's not because I'm just so scared that the devil's got so much power he's going to get in and draw me away from God. But I don't want to chance it. I know what I was like before I studied the Word of God. And nobody's got anything on me. Nobody. So before you start thinking, oh boy, what, what a guy that can study the Bible that much. I'm telling you, I have to. And I know that I have to. Or else I won't be here. I won't be here teaching you. I'll be out doing what my flesh wants to do. That's why I tell you to study. That's why I tell you to get in the Word. It's transforming. You're not going to understand everything. You're not going to comprehend everything. But man, it holds you together. It'll keep your addictions at bay. Amen. But you got, you got to swallow it every day. Just like you do your addictions, you know. I mean, when I was in addiction, I swallowed it every day. More than once. Why wouldn't I even more go after the one that saved me out of that? Jesus said to His disciples, John chapter 6, You must eat me and drink me. That's what He's talking about. This is the Word of God. You must eat me and drink me. If you want your path lighted in this life, eat and drink. Eat and drink. As much as you can eat it, as much as you can drink it, do it. Your life, your, your just your life, will bring people in those doors. Just your life. You won't have to go out and paint the town and knock every door. They don't trust you anyway. People have to get to know you. This day is coming. After the thousand years, then the devil, after he's de deceives the nations, and then God says, that's enough, everything's over, then uh, he is cast into the lake of fire. Remember 19, where the beast and the false prophet were thrown into the lake of fire? A thousand years later, they're still there. Look what it says. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. Listen, there's people floating around today that believe that hell is just going to destroy everybody that goes in it and it's not an eternal torment. It's not true. The beast and the false prophet are thrown in there a thousand years earlier and they're still there. 
when Satan's thrown in there with them. It's eternal. Not something you can ever climb out of. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. Not only does he destroy all the wicked, everybody goes in the lake of fire, he, heaven and earth pass away. And he makes it all brand new. A place where no sin has ever been. And we get to dwell there for eternity. Think about being in a home where you never had sin in it. You know, my home today, look at it, it's got a beautiful woman and three kids, but I've still got things that I'm paying for, for the sins I committed years ago. In this life, that's the way it'll be. But can you imagine having a world, having a earth where no sin has ever been in it? Think about the all the sleepless nights that you have by what your sins have done to you and maybe your children when you wasn't saved. Your children didn't get... Uh, a godly home. And now maybe they're running out there amok because you wasn't you didn't teach them about God and Christ. The sleepless nights. Oh, I wish I'd put more into my faith. And now my kids may not be what they're doing. See. A world without any of that. That's what's coming. But you see, we have the opportunity now to Make our lives that way as much as possible. You start from now and you go forward. Getting all the junk out of your life that shouldn't be there. All the stuff that's going to affect your kids. You have the opportunity now to give them the very best chance. They deserve it. They deserve you sacrificing whatever you need to sacrifice. To give them that opportunity. We've decided to homeschool our kids. Because of a lot of the things that are going on in public schools today. And I have different voices coming at me. Oh, they, they won't be very social. And I understand those arguments. I really do. The other side is, is saying... Um, They'll teach them about evolution. And I definitely understand that side because that's what they do. But you know, if you're bringing your kids up in church, if you're bringing your kids up in church, you don't have to fear. They can be a witness out there if that's the way it has to be. So I've got a wife that's willing to stay home and teach the kids. You know, that's biblical. That's what the Bible wants us to do, but it ain't always possible. See? That's not always possible. And so for the ones that are not possible, you're, we really need to have our kids in church. They need to be learning on a regular basis how to make it navigate through this life. Because the old devil is at every turn trying to steal the heart of our kids. All, that's why it says the four quarters of the earth, because He's everywhere. He's in all governments. He's in all the school systems. But you can navigate around it. You know, I remember when I went to school, oh, I'm thankful I went to school. Can you imagine Mom teaching us anything, guys? No. She would tell the same thing. She'd say, I... She would be able to do it, would she? So I'm thankful that I learned how to count, how to add, subtract, and that's the same thing, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, A to Z, you know, A to Z. Learned all my times tables. I got that from school. So it's not all bad. It's not completely horrible, but it's getting worse and worse all the time. And we need a place that we can go regularly to make sure we're full of God so that when we have to go to those places, we can filter through that stuff. 
Give your kids the best opportunity. And uh, they've uh, 99%, 99.9% possibility that they won't end up in the lake of fire. There's always that 0.1% that's going to do it no matter what. Boy, if you're betting on odds, that's pretty good odds, isn't it? <laughs> Anybody in here a betting man? If you got a or a stock, I, I don't, I'm not a betting man. Just so you know, if you got a stock that's 99.9 percent sure of making you a million dollars in a year, you can't put your money in there fast enough. How much more are your kids worth? I know some of these kids are grown, but. You got grandkids that you can really, really try hard to get in the church. I remember Joyce bringing her grandkids to church every time the doors were open when their parents were struggling. And look at them now. now I know they're still got one that needs some help, but if you believe, if you believe God, He'll be in here too. You see where I'm getting at with all that? Look, we got uh, an awesome opportunity before us. Whatever happens, whatever comes up in this election, whatever takes place, if you vote your conscience, uh, listen, everything's going to be okay either way. Let's be ready for whatever takes place. If the borders get open, let's be ready with gospel tracts. If the borders don't get open, maybe we get to exist for a little while and keep doing what we're doing. You know what I mean? Keep doing what we're doing, and but the, the thought of it all coming this close... To being like it is and losing freedom ought to really get us to use our freedom right from here on out. Oh man, that was close. Whew. Let's take this freedom. Let's redeem the time like Brandon talked about this morning. Let's not waste time with all the stuff that don't matter in life. Let's get a hold of God and His work. And make it the biggest thing in our life. You want to see people come in that door because of you? Would anybody say, I don't want anybody to go to church because of me? I don't want, or I don't want anybody to find Christ because of me. Would anybody say that? That's an awesome honor for somebody to find salvation of their soul. Because of you. Because of your sacrifice. And they'll be with you there. When we stand before Christ, they'll be with you. As you're being judged according to your work as a Christian, those people that came to know Christ because of you will be there with you. Telling the judge. And it's not like nobody needs to tell the judge. He knows. But just think, when if you've ever been to court and uh, somebody stands up and speaks on your behalf, doesn't that help you lift your spirit? Give you a drive? Just imagine. That's just how good... That God is. Why do we talk about this stuff? Last week I said it. So that we'll be prepared for whatever comes. But get out and vote your conscience. It's our privilege. It's a civil privilege. Get out and do that. And then let God be God. Doesn't that make sense? Let's all stand this morning. Lord, we love You. We thank You for loving us. Though the, the graphics are very graphic on what's coming, 
though they are. They should give us an unction for doing what you've called us to do as Christians, not sitting back and just hoping for the best, but being a, involved in it. The fall fest that we had yesterday, everything that was there was being involved in getting people that don't normally go to church to come and get acquainted with God's people. We must be doing this. We must be taking our own lives when we go to work and uh, making sure that, that people know that who we are, who we serve, and they, they get acquainted with us. And we had better be knowing what you expect from us so that when we're out there among the world, the lost and dying world, that we leave a good taste in their mouth. That they don't walk away from us and say, I don't ever want to be around that person again. Help us to find that humility. Lord, we are building what You've called us to build. Help us to do it in every way that we can. Lord, bless our fellowship today as we go up and, and eat and uh, fellowship and reflect on what we saw and heard today from Revelation chapter 20. Give us an unction. Give us a desire to want to do right and see people walk in that door because of how we order our lives. Lord, I pray Your blessing on everything that's done today. Food, fellowship, and everything that we have to do today. Help those not to get hurt that have to move things and the cleaning up and just help it be something that's very pleasing to everyone and especially You. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yeah.